Hi, this is Reverend Elizabeth with you again. I apologize for being a couple days late getting this ready. I had intended to do this outside so we can look at the stars, but I didn't look at the weather and I thought I could do it Saturday night, but the clouds came in and the the remnants of um, Hurricane Delta were coming through, so <laughs> no stars. <laughs> so I am um, coming to you from my office at the house. Now, how many of you have ever gone out into, um, out at night to look at the stars? Sometimes we have to go out of the city <laughs> to go look at the stars. I remember one time um, when I was uh, a young girl, I went to a summer camp on an island in uh, Georgian Bay, which is part of Lake Huron, one of the big lakes that, um, that straddle Canada and the United States. And I remember having to get up in the middle of the night and run to the washroom. Now, we didn't have indoor plumbing, so I had to take my flashlight, go outside and go to the outhouse. And when I opened the door to the cabin and I stepped outside, I stopped and I looked at my watch again and it still said three o'clock and it was so bright outside. And I looked up and the stars were just so bright and you could see the Milky Way and I realized I didn't need a flashlight. In fact, my camp counselor, she was out there with a friend and they were on a blanket just staring at the stars. And I will always remember that experience because it is just amazing to see how great our God and creator is. And one of the stories why I brought up the stars is the story that we are looking at this week is the story of Sarah and Abraham. Now, Sarah and Abraham are two very ordinary people whom God had chosen for a very special purpose. God had chose Abraham and Sarah to be the parents of a multitude of nations. That means that they are going to have a large family. <coughs> Excuse me. And so um, God went up to Abraham and Abraham was very old. And he said, Abraham, I have a task for you. And Abraham said, okay, what's, what is it? And he said, you're going to be the father of many nations. Now, Abraham thought that was funny because Abraham was 99 years old. Now, imagine asking your grandmother or grandfather or the oldest person you know to go up and, and ask them, would you, have, would you want to have a baby? And I'm sure they might laugh at you because... They aren't as young, as vigorous as they once were. So nonetheless, Abraham obeyed God. But God said to Abraham that this family that you will birth, this family that will come from you and Sarah is going to be huge. It's going to be as, as, as we read in scripture, as numerous as the stars and the sky. So I think of the time when I was outside looking at the stars and, I, and I, when I look at this passage, when God said to Abraham, your descendants will be as numerous as them. I am just blown away because there are millions and billions of stars, some of whom we, have, we can't even see. But God doesn't stop there. God goes on to say, and the book of Genesis, which is which book of the Bible? The first book of the Bible. If we turn to uh, book of Genesis chapter 22, verse 17, God says, I will, make your off I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars in the sky and, and, the sand on the seashore. Now, many of us have been to the beach and we know there is lots of sand. So can you imagine, especially for Abraham and Sarah, who lived in a desert climate where there's sand, to imagine what God is calling them to do. That's pretty awesome. 
a little scary, but pretty awesome. God called two ordinary people for a great purpose. And God calls you and me and your parents and your grandparents and your friends and neighbors all for a very special purpose. And so what I would like you to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, what I would like you to do this week and, and to talk uh, with your parents or, or grandparents to, to think about something that you think God is calling you to do that is special. Something that might be a little scary. Sometimes God calls us to, to do things that make us uncomfortable. And those things are often in a, in a loving way. Sometimes, well, it's a little bizarre saying this example, but if you're at school or if you're out playing with friends and if you know, if you see someone who's feeling left out to go and ask them to join you, whatever, whatever you, you pray about and think about what God is calling you to do, you can do it with God's help. Because we all need God's help in everything that we do. And God and Abraham, uh, Abraham and Sarah know that they needed God, God's help to guide them as their family grew. And in the next coming weeks, we will be looking at some of Abraham and Sarah's descendants. And so we will see what kind of family, what kind of children and grandchildren they had, and maybe we can relate to some of them. And so if you would like to further learn about this story, I have been talking, um, mentioned a couple times, there is a wonderful mini series on the YouTube channel. Um, this is for the parents and, and grandparents and those who are helping, um, uh, helping their your your children or grandchildren in this uh, formation it is called i hope it's coming through the right way <laughs> it looks backward from me but i think you have it um it's called god's story and then so god's story and then abraham and sarah this is my little small and sign so god's story abraham and sarah and it all it has a lovely little video that tells the story and i look forward to hearing what your thoughts are so i have you ha hope you have a wonderful and blessed week and i hope the sky will clear up at night so that we can all take some time this week to go out and look at the stars until next time god bless <laughs>